In the introduction of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, narrator Diedrich Knickerbocker describes the origins and beautiful setting of the town of Sleepy Hollow, one of the quietest places in the whole world. Much of the description is focused on the dreamy nature of the valley and its inhabitants, who are superstitious people. The dominant spirit that haunts this region is that of the Headless Horseman, an apparition believed to be a Hessian soldier whose body is buried in the churchyard, but whose ghost seeks its missing head nightly at the nearby battleground where it was severed from his body. Knickerbocker then introduces the main character of the story, an outsider to the region, hailing from Connecticut, a schoolmaster named Ichabod Crane. He's a tall, gangly guy, and as a schoolmaster, he's authoritative and swift to inflict corporal punishment. But after hours, he entertains the older students and babysits the younger ones, gives pretty bad singing lessons, and does odd jobs, with light labor, on the farms in order to earn the free room and board he's given as he moves from household to household, spreading gossip and readily sharing what most of the people perceive as his superior intellect. In the rising action, Ichabod begins wooing the beautiful and wealthy Katrina Van Tassel. The greedy Ichabod Crane practically licks his lips when thinking of getting his hands on her family's sources of food, fine furnishings, and cash. But Ichabod has a rival in his pursuit of Katrina, the hero of Sleepy Hollow, a burly native son nicknamed Brom Bones. Brom is so well-liked and admired in the valley that no one would bother to go up against him in pursuit of Katrina. No one but the clueless Ichabod Crane, that is. Ichabod proceeds to quietly woo Katrina, often calling at the Van Tassel home and giving her singing lessons, eating the family's food, and sharing ghost stories. Now, like the rest of the residents of Sleepy Hollow, Crane is superstitious and often becomes horribly afraid when walking alone in the valley at night. Brahm and his gang regularly play pranks on Ichabod, publicly ridicule him, and even train a dog to howl whenever it hears the schoolmaster sing. One autumn day, Ichabod has an invitation delivered to him at the schoolhouse by a Van Tassel servant to attend a party at their house that night. Ichabod takes extra care in getting ready, dismissing the school children a full hour early. He looks ridiculous as he trots through the beautiful countryside on a broken down plow horse named Gunpowder, borrowed from a neighbor. At the party, Ichabod eats, then dances wildly with Katrina. The evening continues with stories of the Revolutionary War that soon give way to the usual ghost stories. Many different accounts of encounters with the Headless Horsemen are told, including one by the heroic Brom Bones. As the party breaks up, Ichabod lingers to have a private conversation with Katrina. But something, either an awkward conversation or Katrina's inattention, Knickerbocker isn't sure, sees Ichabod leave the party quite desolate and chapfallen. As the dejected Ichabod Crane begins traveling home, he feels spooked as he remembers all the ghost stories he heard that night. As he tries to cross a stream that the village people believe to be haunted, he sees another horseman is nearby. He calls out but receives no answer. This rider shadows Ichabod, speeding up or slowing down as Ichabod does. The frightened schoolmaster is finally able to see this figure is a headless rider who carries what appears to be his head on the saddle in front of him. Ichabod begins a desperate ride to the church. The headless rider is hot on his trail as Ichabod loses his saddle and must cling to the neck of his horse. As he crosses the last bridge, he turns to see if his pursuer will vanish as the legend promises. In the exciting climax of the story, the horseman stands up on his saddle and hurls his head, striking Ichabod right in his cranium and knocking him to the ground as the horseman thunders by. In the falling action, the next day, Ichabod has disappeared. Old gunpowder is found at his master's gate. The villagers search for Ichabod and they soon find his horse's lost saddle and, by the bridge, a smashed pumpkin and Ichabod's hat. But Ichabod Crane is never found. His meager belongings are dispensed with. His books and papers are burned. Most of the inhabitants believe that the headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow has struck again and carried off Ichabod's body. In the resolution, Knickerbocker has written this story 30 years after he heard it from an unnamed old gentleman in a group of respected businessmen and government leaders. The gentleman reports that Ichabod Crane is alive and well, became an attorney, politician, and a court justice. Brom Bones wed Katrina soon after Ichabod's disappearance and often laughs whenever the smashed pumpkin is brought up as the story is told around the fire. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow opens with lots of description before any narrative action occurs. 
Washington Irving viewed story as a simple frame on which to stretch my materials. Irving paints the picture of Sleepy Hollow as an idyllic place, frozen in time and graced by the beauty of nature, in opposition to too rapid progress, a hallmark of literary romanticism which looks to the past and to nature for inspiration. By weaving in ancient stories and folktales, Irving makes it clear that the people of the area have remained true to their roots and have a strong sense of identity. Painting a satirical, comical, unflattering portrait of Ichabod Crane suggests that if the pompous, self-serving, gullible Crane can make it in politics, it indicates what types of people often succeed in that arena.